Welcome to our lecture online. Here's another interesting problem from the JE advanced test. And on this particular one, you've got to be very careful because in a way it's a little bit tricky and you may not think that there's actually two possible answers here. So let's read the problem. It says there are two non-conducting solid spheres of radii R and 2R having uniform volume charge densities, rho one and rho two respectively touch and they touch each other. The net electric field at a distance 2R from the center of the smaller sphere along the line joining the centers of the spheres is zero. The ratio of rho 1 over rho 2 can be, and we got four possible answers. And notice that the charge density can be negative. There could be negative charge as well as positive charge in any one of the spheres. So the best thing to do is to draw a quick diagram because without a quick diagram you're probably not going to figure it out. So we have a smaller sphere and a bigger sphere. So here we have radius r and we have radius 2r. And so the inclination is to go out 2R, because I think that's what they're saying, uh, at a point 2R away from the center of the smallest sphere. So this would be one R right here. There would be another R right there. So at this point right there, point P, and this distance here is 2R from the center of the smaller circle. Uh, we are told that the electric field at that point, the electric field is equal to zero. Well, that necessitates the charge of one of them to be positive and charge the other one to be negative so we have opposing electric fields that can cancel each other out. But the thing that you may not realize is that there's another point that satisfies the description. We can have another point, so let's call this point one, we can have another point right here called point two and notice that this distance from there to there is also two r away from the center of the small circle and yes the electric field there could also be zero. So we actually have to do this twice for both points, point one and point two. I actually missed that on the first one. I didn't realize that, yes, you could also have an answer when you take a point there. And so you have to be very careful with these problems. They sometimes are very tricky. And sometimes if you don't think uh, correctly on this, you may miss one of the possible answers. All right, so let's start with P1. And uh, let's say that this here is positive charge and this one here is negative charge. It doesn't matter which one you make positive or negative in such a way that you're going to have a electric field going this way from the small. So I'll call that E sub S and we're going to have an electric field going in this direction uh, because it's towards the negative. So let's call that E of the large sphere. So there you go. And then of course, what you're going to do is you're going to set those two equal to each other so they cancel out. But in order to do that, we need to find the charges on each of the two charges. So let's call uh, Q on the small sphere is equal to the charge density times the volume, right? So charge density would be delta uh, rho one times the volume, which would be uh, the volume of the sphere. That is four thirds pi r cubed. And of course we have one r there. And so that would be the charge Q small on the small sphere. And the Q on the large sphere would be equal to rho 2 times 4 thirds pi times 2 r cubed. And 2 cubed would be 8. 8 times 4 is 32. So it would be equal to uh, rho 2 times 32 over 3 pi r cubed. So 32, notice there's a 32 in one of the answers. That's probably why it's there. Okay, now we're ready to solve the problem by saying that uh, the magnitude of E small must equal the magnitude of E large. Now the electric field by definition would be K times the charge Q of the small divided by the distance from Q small. So we take it from the center to here that would be 2R and we need to square that. And that must equal the K times Q large divided by the distance squared. Now the distance from the center of this one to here would be 2R, 3R, 4R, 
5r. So it would be distance of 5r, and we have to square that. Now, 5 squared is 25, and notice that's probably where the 25 comes from. So there's a reason why there's a 32 over 25 there. It becomes quite readily uh, obvious at that point. So now when we plug in the values for qs and q large, now of course the k's cancel out. Uh, the r squares cancel out. We don't need the r's anymore. We took care of that. So now qs is rho 1 times 4 thirds pi r cubed divided by 2 squared, which is 4, equals q large, which is rho sub 2, 32 over 3 pi r cubed over, uh, let's see, uh, 5 squared, which is 25. Okay, now we can cancel a bunch of things out. Uh, definitely over 3 cancels out, pi cancels out, r cubed cancels out. And here we have 4 divided by 4, which is 1. So at this point we have rho 1 is equal to 32 over 25, rho 2 32 over 25. Now be careful here, if we then solve for rho 1 over rho 2 being equal to 32 over 25, be very careful because we said that for that to be true, for that to be 0, 1 must be positive and 1 must be negative. So these are the magnitudes, but as essence, so we have electric field small equals the negative electric field large as far as the vectors are concerned so we do need a negative there and that means that this is the correct answer for that point and then you might say I found the answer ready to move on but no there's a second point we need to deal with that's that point right there now of course the effect of electric field at that point due to the charge in here can be found by using Gauss's law like this and we could say that the electric field there, uh, we could say using Gauss's law that the, the uh, integral over the surface, that would be uh, E dot dA is equal to Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught. And of course, in this case, that would be E times the surface area, which is four pi r squared because that point would be one radius in from the center so the surface area of that Gaussian surface would be 4 pi r squared and that would be equal to the q inside which is what we're looking for divided by epsilon sub naught. So at that point um, well what is the q inside? Well the q inside can be determined by well simply we'll go over here so q inside is equal to rho 2 times 4 thirds pi, and in this case the radius inside the Gaussian surface is only r cubed. So therefore q inside is equal to this. Which means that E, the electric field of the second sphere, is going to be equal to q inside, which is going to be rho 2, 4 thirds pi r cubed, that's q inside, divided by 4 pi r squared times epsilon sub naught. Notice that the 4's cancel out, the pi cancel out, r squared cancel out r cubed. And so that gives us uh, rho 2, r, the 3 comes down here, and epsilon sub naught. So that's the electric field due to the second charge. Hmm. Okay, so now what we can do is, we, at this point, we have an electric field going this way, and maybe I'll use a different color because that way you can see it. So we have an electric field, let's call this electric field 2, and now we have an electric field due to the small sphere, let's call it electric field 1. Notice that they are now in opposite directions, so they can both be positive. So that means that if these answers are correct, we'd have to go for the positive answer, not for the negative answer, because positive charge causes electric fields in opposite directions. So now what we can do is we can call, we can say that E1 equals E2. All right, now we're ready to equate these two equal to one another. Remember that they're pointing in opposite directions, so they cancel out. They both must come from positive charges, so the ratio of the charge densities must be positive. E1 
can be found by taking this as k times q1 divided by the distance squared. Now the distance from here to here is 2r, so we have 2r squared is equal to e2. Now e2 is calculated right here, so it would be density 2 times r divided by 3 epsilon sub naught. But now remember that epsilon sub naught is related to k as follows. k equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught. So epsilon sub naught is equal to 1 over 4 pi k. Since that's in the denominator, this will then go to the numerator. So here we get k times q1. Now q1 is right there. So we have rho 1, 4 thirds pi r cubed cubed divided by uh, 2r squared, 2, oh, that would make it 4r squared because I'm squaring it, so 4r squared is equal to rho 2r divided by 3, but epsilon sub naught in the denominator is going to be written as 4 pi k in the numerator. Almost there. So now notice that we have a k here and a k there, a pi there and a pi there. We have a 4 here and a 4 there, and 1 over 3 and a 3, so that cancels out. And notice we now have r squared and r cubed, and an r and an r, that cancels out. So finally, let me go over here so it's a little cleaner. On the left side, we end up with rho 1 over 4 is equal to, on the right side, all we have left is rho 2, so that means that rho 1 over rho 2 is equal to a positive 4. Remember positive because the electric fields are pointing in opposite directions so the second answer D being 4. Now notice it's a little bit tricky. Notice that we thought we were done, or at least I thought I was done by finding the electric field coming to zero over here, but there was a second point, a distance 2r away from the center of the small circle, where the electric fields can also be zero with the appropriate ratios of the charge densities. And so that is not a problem you'll do in three minutes or less, but at least that is how it's done. Did they tell you there's two answers? No, they don't tell you there's two answers. They give you four possible answers, which ones are correct, and <laughs> you just have to think about that, two, two, that there's two possibilities. So definitely drawing it out and looking at it might make you realize that, yes, there's one distance here, but there's another one on that side, and yes, that will cause two electric fields to cancel each other out. I didn't catch it the first time, so yeah, it's easy to miss. <laughs>